We're very excited to have you all here for the launch of our new simulation, which is uh, Emotional Intelligence at Work, or as we like to call it internally, EI at Work. Uh, I have with me Amrita, uh, who will be uh, moderating this session. The, uh, for those who have been with us on previous launches, you're already familiar with the agenda. Uh, for the others, this is what we will be doing today. Uh, we'll have a quick intro about Nonscape. What are we doing? What is our uh, philosophy? Then we'll go on to the industry insights that actually uh, led us towards creating this simulation. And uh, you know, it'll be a good opportunity for us uh, to exchange views to see what you also feel about uh, the importance of emotional intelligence at work. Uh, then we'll give you a, a preview of the simulation. We'll actually launch it. Uh, you will not be able to play it, but we will walk you through the different screens, different scenarios that are there in the simulation, as well as what you can get out of it uh, as part of your uh, learning system. Then uh, we'll finally wrap up the session with a Q&A. Now uh, to talk about Nonscape, uh, let me introduce Amrita. She's the AVP of, of our products division. Amrita, over to you. Thank you, Sheeram, and hello and welcome everyone. Uh, it's nice to know that there are so many people who have joined us today. I'm sure you're as excited as I am. Uh, let me begin by telling you a little bit about Nonscape. Nonscape's mission is to develop future-ready organizations and employees through experiential learning. Uh, as we know, we are in the digital age and talent crisis is real. Transformation, therefore, is an existential imperative for employees and organizations. If you think about how to solve for this crisis, you'll realize that traditional learning models are falling short. They are passive. They don't give you worthwhile analytics. So we need a breakthrough approach that accelerates employee transformation and builds digital mindsets at scale. Mindsets is the key here. Nonscape's rapid upskilling approach has two distinct value propositions. Um, stay on the previous slide, please. Uh, so Nonscape's rapid upskilling approach has two distinct value propositions. One is for the learner, where we create an immersive learning experience that inspires confidence and builds future-ready capabilities through a large portfolio of award-winning simulations and experiential courses. And for the organizations, whatever we do, we do at scale. We transform talent at scale, and thousands and thousands of employees go through our trainings uh, and are upskilled for the future. We also provide in-depth talent analytics through a cutting-edge talent intelligence platform. And this approach of Nonscape has been widely regarded in the industry uh, by Burson and uh, by Deloitte, uh, we have been identified as global disruptor in the learning space. We've received the top 20 gamification company award by trainingindustry.com. We also received the Brandon Hall award many years in a row with some of our prestigious clients. Uh, so it was a double win-win for us. And we are a great place to work as well. As you can see, all smiles. Uh, our approach to preparing future ready talent has two parts to it. Uh, one is where we focus on leading now where the core aim is to accelerate leadership transformation. We focus on close to 100 plus competencies at individual, business, and team level leadership competencies. Leading next is all about building digital mindsets at scale. Today's product, you'd be interested to know uh, that we're about to launch, is aligned to leading now, where we will be talking about emotional intelligence at work, which has emerged as a must-have competency in the disruptive day and age. Uh, these are some of our brands we work with globally. We have a client pool of over 300 leading organizations as our customers, uh, spanning across 75 countries. We have strategic partnerships with various B schools and top tier consulting firms. And in a given year, we touch close to 400,000 learners. This is essentially a quick snapshot of our simulation products. These are immersive experiences where learners assume a role. So when we will be showcasing our simulation today to you, you will see how you will assume a role uh, when you're playing the simulation. Uh, you get exposed to a certain reality in a virtual context and you take decisions. These decisions are captured and analyzed by our analytics engine to create an in-depth report for the player. The, uh, our engine is not just restricted to the player. We also aggregate the cohort data for the entire organization. And that's how we add value to our clients. Uh, when it comes to analytics and talent intelligence, there are multiple touch points and outputs we create for reporting across products, across platforms, and across people. And this data can be benchmarked across business units within the organization, across organizations and industry as well. Uh, I see it as an incredible value add for any organization that is looking for this kind of data. 
So now that I'm done with the quick introduction to Nolscape, we are ready to enter the second segment of the day. Over to you, Shriram. Thanks, Amita. Uh, so now let's jump into the emotional intelligence part of this launch. Uh, so we'd like to actually take this opportunity to talk to you, to have a conversation with you on this uh, topic itself. And to do that, we would like you to share your thoughts through the chat box or even, uh, you know, click on the raise button icon. Uh, and then we'll unmute your microphone so that you can actually share it, uh, you know, uh, with us. So the question that uh, we would like to ask you is why is emotional intelligence so important, especially now that, you know, many of us are working in a digital work environment, we are working on our own, uh, either in a hybrid office or even virtually, completely virtually. So why is it so important now? You can actually share your thoughts in the uh, chat box or click on raise, uh, raise your hand icon. We'll unmute your microphone. Shayoni says, since we are isolated, the human touch helps to connect. Uh, Mohammed, thanks for your response. He says, to prevent counterproductive performance. Yes, that's true. Self-awareness to be better leaders. Uh, in digital interaction, we don't uh, detect non-verbal signs as easily as real life. Yes, that's true. Uh, for employee engagement on personal and organizational level, uh, text is not attached with emotion. We connect via emotion. That is so true. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, anyone who would like to raise their hand wishes to speak to us, you can do that as well. Okay, so Amita, I have a question for you. Uh, so clearly, a lot of research went into this topic uh, when we were creating uh, this simulation. Yeah. Uh, and given the responses that we've just received, how do you see it all coming together? Well, the question holds the answer, and I think people are rightly saying, right, that it's a digital world, we are not in front of each other, we need to be in, you know, fine-tuned to what people are thinking, what they are doing. Working relationships are either breaking down or not even forming, thanks to the digitally connected world that we are in today. And in a world that is posing new challenges to us, I think emotional intelligence is far more important than ever. Digital work environment has created distance, people tend to jump to conclusions. I can't see uh, what you're thinking, half the time we are on calls, which are not where the video is also not on. So I can't even look into your eye and see what you're thinking, right? So when you can't gauge what the other party is experiencing, uh, you need to double up on your emotional intelligence. Um, I think you need to turn into a radar who, needs, uh, who is capable of picking up how others are feeling. And instead of reacting or jumping to conclusions, you need to respond accordingly. I think that is really, really crucial. So yes, I think... Uh, Emotional intelligence at work is absolutely critical. It's crucial today. Each and every one, leader or not, needs to have this competency developed in them. That brings me to my next question then. Uh, how do you strike uh, the right balance between taking care of the emotional needs of people and then you know the organizational goals? Because a lot of people struggle with putting either people first or they struggle by putting the business first. Uh, do we want to open the floor? Uh, if anyone wants to say anything on this particular question, please uh, go ahead, fire your responses in the chat window or raise a hand and talk to us, please. Uh, it's all about striking the right balance, right? So what? how do you go about doing it? Or is that even necessary? Do we actually need to strike the right balance or do we let people figure it out? Again, uh, please share your responses on the chat uh, box. So Savanan says it's about listening and finding a solution together. Yes, that's true. So it is about not just people, not just leaders, not just business goals, but the whole combined uh, equation, right? Um, you cannot achieve business goals if you do not have a fully functional workforce. Um, I will go ahead and uh, express what I think about this, right? So how people feel affects their output. In the service industry, it reflects in their interaction with their customers, uh, with the people around them. Uh, and it's not restricted only to the service industry. Think about product companies. It impacts how we focus on productivity, collaboration, our interpersonal dealings. 
to strike the right balance between the two, I believe well-being initiatives should be added to the KRS of the leaders. We need to allocate time and budget for developing and maintaining interpersonal relationships. Have coffee connects. Uh, give the last Fridays off. We do that at Nullscape. And truly speaking, in this really erratic world, it has helped. It has helped a lot of people to deal with how they feel uh, every given day. It is important that we give our leaders time, space, and tools like training, mentoring, talking to someone and seeking support, somebody who has actually dealt with such a situation or is an expert at people uh, to deal with problems at a deeper, deeper level. Uh, we should be addressing the underlying issues rather than making quick fixes. So I think, yes, we need to strike a balance. And to do that, we need to allocate time, space, tools, and enable our leaders to be able to do that. OK. So um, up, up next is actually a poll question for all of you. Uh, Hardik, could we have the uh, poll activated, please? Hardik or Raga? Yeah, Shira. In fact, you, you, could, you can probably see two questions there. Uh, please answer both. And let us know what you think about these two questions that we have. What are the biggest enablers for an organization to develop a workforce with high emotional intelligence? Uh, is it inclusivity and strong communication? Is it empathy and compassion? Or is it just you know finding that right balance that we were just talking about? The next question that we would like to pick your brains on is, what are the key characteristics or traits that you would recommend for an individual to develop their emotional intelligence? Is it just empathy? Is it uh, an increased level of self-awareness? Or is it actually being optimistic, you know, having a positive attitude throughout? What do you think? Uh, if you've actually responded to the poll, could you type a yes in the chat box so that we know and we can populate the results? Okay, quite a few yeses. Okay, uh, I think that's quite a few yeses. Thank you so much. Uh, Raghav, would you like to close the poll? Let's see the results. Sure. Just sharing the results now. So 27 percent of people today have said inclusivity and strong communication is one of the biggest enablers. Empathy and compassion, compassion I found for about 45 percent, and again 27 percent for balancing business and people goals. What do you think, Amita? Uh, if you actually look at it, uh, I was actually expecting a 33 percent across because effective, uh, effective communication, empathy and compassion, and inclusivity, right? All three top the charts. In fact, in today's day and age, balancing business and people goal has become a real challenge. As I said before, you cannot achieve business goals if you do not have a fully functional workforce. So we need to develop a soft and existing processes so that leaders find the room to prioritize people's needs when necessary. For example, putting employee well-being back in focus, allowing work from home, literal movement to accommodate newfound interests, or achieving a work proper work-life balance. Talking about the other enablers, I'd say, it all rests with effective communication. And effective communication is not just, you know, the soft, sweet, good days and how I use, but your ability to give feedback and criticize constructively to help people really understand and acknowledge where they stand, especially for managers and leaders who are trying to do this virtually. It's not an easy game. Uh, empathy and compassion are a must have to truly understand what the other person is going through. You cannot do without it. Uh, unless you put yourself in other people's shoes, you don't know where the shoe pinches, right? Um, inclusivity is about breaking the hierarchical mindsets that prevents two-way dialogues. And I think uh, today we achieve things together. It's not what about, about, it's not about what I think. It's not about what you think. It's about what we think. So if we take the football analogy, right? Every pass and kick is important if you truly want to strike a goal and win a match. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our uh, audience members today, uh, AU, I don't know if I pronounced that right, uh, has made a very uh, interesting point. Uh, but then for organizational approach, communication and a culture of inclusivity is the pathway. I'm quoting this directly. Sure. Compassion and empathy are for individuals to manage EQ. 
Yes, I think it all goes hand in hand, right? Uh, compassion, empathy, balancing, and keeping people in mind, it all goes hand in hand. Uh, okay, looking at the results for the second question, um, building empathy towards stakeholders is at 11%. A lot of us have said the right thing by saying increasing self-awareness uh, has got the maximum votes at 74% and maintaining a positive attitude at 15%. Uh, if you truly look at them, it all begins with self. Then uh, you must have heard about Daniel Goldman's research on emotional intelligence, which led to the development of uh, the EI framework. And he gives very clearly four key quadrants that, needs, uh, that one needs to work on in order to build their own emotional intelligence. And it begins with self-awareness. Unless you are aware about yourself, there's no way that you can manage your own emotions. If you can't manage your emotions, I think uh, you would superficially empathize. You won't be able to empathize in the truest sense. Once you truly empathize, I think positive attitude is something that comes in naturally and relationships are managed better. So um, though we give different percentages to all of them, I think all of them are equally, equally important. We need to work on all aspects to be truly emotionally intelligent. Thanks, Amita. Uh, I, th I think, and this is a topic that we could probably uh, talk about for hours, but in the interest of time, uh, we should probably now just take a step to the side and go uh, take a look at the simulation that we are launching today. Interestingly enough, as uh, Amza was talking about Daniel Goldman's uh, framework, and that's in fact what we have used as uh, one of the cornerstones of our simulation itself. Yeah, at work, uh, we'll cover the introduct. We'll we'll introduce you to the sim. We'll cover use cases and competencies. We'll give you a, a quick preview of the simulation as well, and then a quick uh, preview of the report. Uh, now the value proposition we've uh, set it out already, but I I'm just reiterating it here. The idea is to give people a hands-on simulation, which will help them absorb the key facts or facets of developing and exhibiting emotional intelligence at work. Uh, now emotional intelligence itself is a very wide topic, right? So the idea is actually to uh, help people figure out, I mean, so, so we've also kept it as simple as possible so that uh, it becomes very easy for our learners to pick up the key skills that they need to uh, translate it into their actions as quickly as possible. And simulations, as always, they create, a, a, they give a very, uh, you know, stable, very safe environment where people can afford to fail and then learn from that failure. The key learning outcomes that uh, we are looking to deliver through this simulation and the course uh, that comes with it uh, is that our learners develop a wider emotional vocabulary that actually helps them not only express themselves better, but also even from that, the very first aspect, which is self-awareness, which is reflection and understanding what others are feeling, a wider emotional vocabulary actually plays a key role in helping you do that. The next uh, outcome that learning outcome that we want to deliver is uh, helping people identify how emotions are triggered. So quite often we have caught up in emotions before we even realize it and then we react. Uh, our objective with this course will be to help people take a step back, understand uh, what is actually happening here and then how do they deal with it better. Address emotional states to improve productivity, not just their own, but also the emotional states of their team members. And that again starts from reading the emotional states, understanding what's important, what's not, and then you know figuring out uh, what they will need to do to uh, address this situation, how they can actually help their team members. Uh, and then finally, integrate empathy because the key element of this course that we are looking at is also to help people build stronger relationships with the people that they work with, with the people that they work for. Now, what does this mean for a business? You know, you've, you've done all this for the learners, but then how does this translate into positive outcomes for you? Uh, one is it creates an emotionally sensitive culture, which does not compromise on business focus. So at every point of time, even during the simulation, you will see that uh, we're not saying that, hey, prioritize a, uh, you know, either people wellness or organizational goals. It's actually about the two going hand in hand. Uh, two, because people have stronger relationships with each other, uh, they will also be able to work better with each other. They'll be able to collaborate better. They'll be able to coordinate better 
And what this means for the organization is that as teams uh, start, uh, you know, performing more uh, in a more united fashion, the productivity for the organization, the productivity at team levels, the productivity even at individual levels will go up. It also means a more harmonious working environment because as people start understanding each other, there's going to be less friction that will need a, you know, somebody else stepping in from outside to actually help them resolve. And finally, improve internal and external customer connect because if you can't empathize with the people that you work with, with the people that you interact with on a daily basis, uh, then how are you going to empathize for your customer? So the idea is that as we build each layer of uh, your emotional intelligence, as we build each layer uh, of emotional intelligence within your organization, their ability to connect with each other and with people outside the ecosystem uh, will just improve. Use cases. So these are some of the use cases that we see for this uh, course upfront. Uh, it's part of the leadership journey for a first time manager, somebody who's just stepping into a leadership role. Uh, it can also be an upskilling uh, intervention for middle managers and leaders who are probably emotionally intelligent to a certain extent, but who will, pro will also benefit by actually going through a structured course that gives them a very easy, absorbable framework that they can then uh, remember to apply. Uh, even in the onboarding of fresh hires and individual contributors, this can help because the idea is that you know somebody coming into your organization, they need to fit in with the uh, with the good parts of the culture, right? As in how collaboratively or how cohesively they can work with each other. And then finally, building a harmonious environment, like I said, so in case uh, you're going through a period of flux or you just want to ensure that, hey, uh, you know, we are working remotely or we are working in a hybrid fashion, things are changing. Uh, let's make our, uh, you know, our people mindful of each other. This is a good place to, uh, this is a good way of doing it. Uh, this is just one of a possible journey that you would have where, you know, EI at work uh, goes along with our LVT simulation leading virtual teams and trust simulation courses uh, to form a complete journey for a first time or a middle manager. Uh, but this is not the only possibility, right? So in case you have some uh, requirements that do not fit within this uh, journey or within this learning path, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll work with you in figuring out what actually works best for your requirements for your people. Um, uh, here's a quick look at the concept and framework that we are using within the simulation. Like I said, the idea is not to uh, dump a lot of information about emotional intelligence on people, you know, not to overwhelm them, but to actually give them a bite-sized uh, framework that they, can, they, that they can always remember how to implement or how to use in their daily lives. So uh, our framework, uh, we've used uh, a lot, we've gone through a lot of research. We've also uh, primarily anchored it on Daniel Goldman's, uh, you know, extensive research on this topic. But if you see here, uh, we have split it into two parts. So there is self and then there, there is how do you deal with others? And even in that, it starts with awareness. As we just saw, 74% of you said self-awareness is actually key to emotional intelligence. So that's also part of uh, what we have here, self-awareness, and then you follow that up with self-management. So how, how do you detect the emotions that you're going through? How do you deconstruct them? And then how do you deal with those emotions now that you know what's caused them? And then once you have a little more self-awareness, once you are a little more, uh, uh, you're better able to manage yourself, you can also move on to managing others who are, uh, you know, looking to you for some guidance. So that starts with empathy, which means understanding exactly what people are going through. And then on to relationship management, which is how do you use your own awareness of what you're feeling and your awareness of what others are feeling, that, that empathy, how do you use that to make life better all around? Now, um, I'll quickly take you to the simulation. Um, so the Simulation actually puts you uh, in the role of a VP of a software solution company that's California based. The team is actually going through a lot of flux following an acquisition and people are not really, you know, cohesive, you know, they're fighting with each other. There's a lot of friction. Uh, you've been brought in to smooth things over and also ensure that the team delivers on some vital business goals. Now, uh, any learner who walks into the simulation will also get a detailed walkthrough uh, on how to use different elements of this user interface. 
for now in the interest of time i'm just keeping ahead to specific conversations that you can look at but overall there are quite a few scenarios that are uh, presented to the participant to the learner uh, in the simulation and the choices that they make uh, as they take each decision as they make each decision it helps them understand blind spots in their own understanding as well as uh, it po pointing them towards the right uh, course of action that they could have adopted uh, which would have actually turn things around in a positive way so uh, let's look at this email and like i said you know you you've been brought in your your role in this simulation is uh, as a vp and you've been brought in you've just received this stinker from a ceo saying hey you know it's been four weeks since you joined but things have not progressed i'm not seeing that progress now what happens is you're given choices let's say these are four choices that you have right uh in one you are acknowledging the ceo's feelings but you are saying that you still need more time in the second one uh you agree with the ceo but you are also again buying a little more time to figure out what you need to do to uh, so resolve the issues between glen and michael two members of your team third is a slightly defensive tone where you are saying hey you know i've spoken to everybody now i'm going to do some team building exercises and the fourth is you know you also give it back right because uh, you're an adult you don't want to be spoken to like a kid so you respond to your ceo saying hey you know i deserve to be treated better now uh, options a b c and d um uh, i'd like you to uh, let me know through the chat box which option i should go for a b c or d this is a this is b this is c this is d okay i'm seeing a lot of uh, b c s okay uh i'm seeing a lot of b s and c s um All right, I'm going to choose C then. This is the response that I'm going to give. Now, as with all our simulations, uh, anybody who is playing this will also get near instant feedback because you need to know whether you've done something well or not. So you can see these two uh, objectives here, which you are supposed to achieve. So you you are at one point one. uh for self mastery and one for relationship mastery the idea is that your actions uh are accurate enough to take you to four stars each now what you've done here is you've chosen option c and this is the response that you get you know is it uh, do you do you think that team building exercises are all that you need to uh, resolve deep issues between two people now let's do one thing uh let's look at the same scenario but let's choose option b this time so option b as i said is uh you know where you are responding to the ceo's email saying hey you know i agree that it shouldn't have happened you're not reacting to how the ceo has written to you very sharply you're just saying hey you know looks like there is some history there i need to you know do the proper process i need to sit down with them i need to understand them i you know so basically you need to build that awareness of what your team members are going through and you're also open to suggestions now what happens look at the score so earlier it had jumped up just by 0.15 now it's jumped up by 0.58 and you get a very positive response from the ceo as well so you take a negative situation where the ceo was in a sense shouting at you but just by reacting in a or responding in a in an open transparent manner you also gotten the ceo to again jump back on your side saying hey you know i love your spirit i can see that you thought this too these are the sort of responses that you will see through the simulation which will help learners figure out hey you know this is okay i'm getting a, a, a negative response or i'm getting a negative push from whoever i'm talking to then that means it's not the right thing now they might actually be responding in the simulation the same way that they do in real life but in this case at least there are no real world consequences nobody within their actual team is going to get angry because uh, you know they spoke to them very rudely 
this is another way that uh, you know you receive scenarios in the simulation you've seen one which is which is through uh, email uh, you also have chat messages popping up from different members of your team where they'll say hey you know i have a problem uh, i need some help and then what do you do there how do you respond to that do you say okay i don't have time in, in some cases you can actually choose uh, what tone you take when you're responding in this particular case you have monica uh, within your team who's uh, you know, who's reached out to you, she wants help because she's nervous about presenting to senior management. And you have four choices here. You have A, which says, hey, you already have solid research. Why do you need, uh, uh, I mean, would presenting to a smaller audience help? Or, you know, can can the two of us go over? Then you have somebody, uh, then the other option is to say that, hey, you've done all the hard work. Why are you worried about it? You know, basically you're playing down her fears. Um, third is, you know, uh, just pointing out that, the only reason Monica is worried right now is because she's low on confidence. That's all she needs to work on. And the fourth is, hey, don't let fear talk you out of an opportunity like this. But uh, if you can't do it, you know, do you want me to uh, or, or someone else to do it? And these are all strategies that we've taken with our team members, right? We either uh, tell them that, hey, there is nothing to worry about or, okay, if you are very worried about it, then I'll take it up. You, you believe that you are actually helping them by taking something off their plate. A, B, C, D, which one do you think I should go for? You have a very empathetic audience, uh, Shriram. A lot of them are picking A. Awesome. They love working together. Awesome. As you can see here, the response from Monica also agrees with you, you know. So, this, this is exactly the uh, sort of experience that you have within the simulation. And at the end of it, um, every uh, learner who plays this simulation gets a customized user report, which breaks down their performance within the simulation on four competencies. Uh, these four competencies tie back to the framework that I was talking to you earlier. So self-awareness, self-management, empathy, and relationship management. This is just a sample report. Not everybody is going to get 10 across the board. Uh, but when you have something, when you have a sub perfect score, when you have something in the range of, let's say, six or seven or even three or four, uh, there are also insights which you can see here, which are uh, marked with a bulb icon, which actually lets learners know hey, this is what you could have done to uh, maybe improve your self awareness if that's what you've struggled with. Right. So this is a very dynamic, very personalized user report that each learner gets according to their performances within the simulation. And uh, that actually brings us to the end of the demo. Um, I'd like to open the floor for questions from you. Any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself or ask us through the chat box. I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Uh, SR, if you go to the report, there's a question uh, by uh, Chit Kangar. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. It's asking, is the report rating uh, based? Uh, rating based, and what is the scale? Uh, so, uh, if you can present, uh, if you can see in the middle image, uh, we have uh, Nolstep's comprehensive scale, uh, where each competency is measured at uh, from zero to ten points. Uh, at, at the lowest, uh, you are between uh, 0 to 2. And if you see, if you do really well in the simulation, you reach the top level where you are a role model, where you are scoring about 8 to 10. Uh, the different situations in the simulation are uh, connected to different competencies. And as you perform, you are rated on a scale of 10. Uh, does that answer your question, Tangar? I hope it does. Is there a time limit on this uh, on the sim? Yes, yes, there is a time limit. Uh, it is a time of based simulation. It is a twenty five minute simulation that we have over here that we played today. Um, There's a question. Is higher from... better? Yes, in the rating, higher is definitely better. The more you score, the better you are performing in the simulation. Uh, the lesser you score, it is a clear indication that you are not performing very well. Uh, yes, Shivam, you were saying. Uh, there's a question from Abjit. Uh, can these messages be customized to suit my situation? Yes, customization of 
uh, this simulation in terms of the storyline or in terms of individual scenarios, that's possible. Uh, th but that's a discussion that we'll have to take uh, offline. Uh, maybe after this call, uh, let us know what would be a good time to connect. And we can talk about uh, how we can create a variation of this that works for you and your organization. Does the platform export the results in LMS in particular competencies? Uh, at the end of the simulation, you will get a comprehensive report which will have measured all the competencies. It comes to our platform. Our platform can also be integrated with yours and we can work through it. Uh, this is for a deeper discussion. Uh, I think, Philip, if you want to get in touch with us, we can explain uh, this better. But yes, this entire report will actually tell you how each player has performed on each competency. And then we have something uh, where we uh, collate all, the, uh, all these reports together and we give you a comprehensive report of the entire cohort as well. We call that a group report. You can see how the entire batch is performed. Uh, but we can yes, discuss this further if you want more clarification. Uh, the duration is 30 minutes. Yes. Is there a drawback in being too high on emotions? Being high on emotions and being emotionally intelligent are not the exact same thing. In fact, uh, it's a very nice uh, truth and dare kind of a question. Hey, if I'm extremely emotional, am I emotionally intelligent? Uh, no, not necessarily. We don't want crime bags uh, to be all around us. We want people who can empathize, who can understand their own emotions, their own situation, evaluate and take a step back, take a little pause and respond. I think that's the idea. And if somebody else in front of you, like we saw the case of Monica, right? She's new, she's nervous, and she's looking up to you that what should I do in this case? Your emotional intelligence would take into consideration how she feels and how it is best to respond to such a situation. So being high on emotions is not an equivalent of high uh, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is a balance, a balance of all the four competencies that we've spoken about, self-awareness, self-management, empathy, and relationship management. So uh, I hope that answers your question. How many scenarios do you cover in 30 minutes? Uh, depending, uh, Rupa, depending on uh, how quickly do you go through each scenario and how do you respond to them, you have somewhere up to 20 different scenarios uh, that a minimum that a person would go through. Uh, however, if a branch opens up, you can have up to 23 scenarios, first case. Uh, that's the number. I hope that answers your question. I answered the question on grading scale. Uh, to clarify again, the four key quadrants, how do you perform in self-awareness, self-management, empathy, and relationship management, Abhijit? Uh, that's how we come up with the uh, score in the simulation, how have you responded? These pointers are absolutely subjective to your responses in the simulation. Uh, they are not, I'm not assessing you in your real life. There's no way I can do that. So we have put these situations, how do you respond to each situation is what to get you your score. We also have a question through the Q&A panel. Uh, during the simulation, can we undo a response? Is it recorded as final once replied? Yes, uh, there are no backseats. So once you've selected an option and you've said reply or you've said submit this, then it's done. Uh, AU asks, would you like to con uh, contact you later about this? Absolutely. Please, in your own free time, leave a message for us or we have your email. AU will uh, definitely get in touch with you. It's not a problem. Uh, what if a person puts his or her best foot forward and does not really answer according to what they would actually do in real life? Uh, I'm not too sure if I understand that question. Esa, can you help me with that question? Uh, sure. If I understand you, uh, lose connect uh, correctly. Uh, you're saying that they might perform well in the simulation, but you know, again, when they go back to real life, they might be subject to the same uh, pressures and you know uh, tendencies. Is that right? If if that's the case. Uh, I'll, I'll assume that's the case. So that that's fine because the idea of the simulation is not to create a perfect learner. The idea is to help them actually understand, hey, these are my blind spots. And uh, that's the first outcome of a simulation. The second outcome of a simulation is that you figure out how to address these blind spots. Now, if somebody is actually uh, put their best foot forward in the simulation and uh, you know, if they actually understand that, hey, you know, these are the places where I struggle with 
certain aspects of emotional intelligence that's half the job done for us and then after that when they go forth and they start applying it in real life the seed has been planted you know they know that okay you know this is something that i didn't know before but now that i know this is something i'm doing wrong how do i make it better the simulation goes a long way in helping you figure out how you can make things better but then again as with the simulation it's practice that uh, you know makes them perfect going forward in fact i would say there are both possibilities there are people who put their best foot forward in the simulation are not necessarily uh, capable of doing that in real life but at least the simulation has simulated that environment around you've tried to solve the situation next time when you're faced with the situation in real life you would remember the response that you had at that point and we do encourage uh, to take a step back to take a little pause think and respond and not react so i think simulation is your point of application of the learning uh, in the uh, virtual context in real life yes a lot depends on a person and we would hope after the training and after going through 20 different scenarios you would be prepared to put your best foot forward in real life as well uh lata has asked uh, does it accept multiple responses from one person it doesn't so each person uh, when you log in a learner gets one chance to play the simulation uh, per license and during that they are given only one chance to respond to each scenario of course they can pause they can think uh, because there are a couple of steps between choosing an answer and then submitting it but once submitted that's done Uh, Shani has a very nice question. Would the responses also have an impact on the organization or environment they are working? Every individual has an impact on the other, and it impacts the organization. So, if you saw the chat that we showed you, uh, that was a one-to-one chat. But how a person feels will, uh, you know, impact the others' emotions as well. There are other scenarios where more than one people are involved, and you will see that there the impact is on the entire cohort or the group that you are dealing with at that time. so uh, every response that you have to every individual in life it is not restricted to them it goes beyond and yes it impacts the organization the environment we are talking about building an empathetic culture we're talking about an intelligent uh, emotionally intelligent workforce so it is going to go beyond that right it's going to go and impact everyone in the organization and to answer the questions about the research and the uh, basis so as we already mentioned uh, we've based a fair bit of this product on daniel goldman's research which has you know which has been extensive which has been over years which has covered a wide cohort uh, and not just daniel goldman in fact if you look at uh, pretty much many any theory about uh, emotional intelligence that's out there they pretty much dovetail towards uh, these four aspects that are key uh, as key to uh, proper emotional intelligence uh, dhara has a good question will the report share recommendations Uh, yes thara if you look at the third image that we've shared with you there is something called as insight uh, here we actually tell the person in the first half we tell what self awareness is about and then we say how you perform and what should you be doing in order to be more self aware um, we do uh, we also have our virtual learning sessions that happen before you play the simulation where we have a deep uh, discussion with everyone and thereafter we also have a debrief where again we will interact with you so let's say you are the one who's played the simulation uh, our facilitators will be debriefing you through it and they will talk about strategies of how to improve your self awareness or self management wherever you need inputs it's there in the report as well you're welcome ma'am i think that answers rupa's question as well uh, where if the result is 2 out of 10 uh, emerging there are recommendations there are uh, suggestions or there are insights that should help learners actually figure out how they can improve philip has asked questions about uh, how do we actually track a user a, a learner's evolution if i'm not wrong uh, from playing the simulation to adapting these lessons to real life and then how do we keep track of it uh amrita uh, could you repeat that for me shiva so uh philip has uh, asked uh, do you have survey example to share with the learner team after the simulation to see if there is a change in the way he reacts 
emotionally to different situations uh philip we would love to work with you closely on this one to be able to devise a proper journey uh where we can have uh, surveys and we can see the needle movement and we can uh, after the simulation we also have a debrief as i initially said where we talk to people about how they have performed what has gone right what has gone wrong and what are the strategies to deal with it uh i think this is a conversation we can take uh, separately but yes we can design a proper journey uh for you where you have surveys and you have more in depth analysis of what comes later how do people perform later abhijit has uh, abhijit is asking if the simulation can be integrated with an hr system uh, where the performance ratings can suggest ai areas to fix after Uh, exploiting AI to be a partner in this task. Uh, Abhijit, I think I'll take this conversation offline with you and see how we can better integrate. What is exactly your question? Uh, which pieces would you want integrated? I think it's a discussion for a uh, uh, one-to-one discussion that we can have. Uh, let my team get in touch with you, Abhijit, and then we can discuss this further. In fact, I think that's the second question about integration. Uh, Philip had also asked about yes. integration with the LMS. So that's that's a conversation that we can probably have afterwards. Uh, how about other languages outside of English? If you have a requirement, uh, we do uh, translations in different languages. Again, let's connect. If you tell us your language requirement, we can think about how can we do this mutually and give you the simulation in a different language. We have presence across the globe, so yes. Uh, we have language capabilities will the simulation be recommended to cs leaders to yes i think uh, emotional intelligence is important across cadres it's not just for the first time managers it's for people who have already reached a certain level in their uh, career and even they need a reminder of how to manage this uh, the given scenario today is such that it is very challenging for everyone it can be mapped across levels uh, uh, dhara uh, i think in fact it is even more important for leaders today at a cs level 2 it is extremely extremely important that they revise what emotional intelligence was all about uh, put themselves in those scenarios and see how they fare and uh, actually retrain themselves on it so yes it can be mapped to cs levels as well and in fact as we were saying earlier uh, if the idea is that cx leaders might also need more complicated scenarios that's also something that we could look at uh, yes. as a partnership effort all right so if those are all the questions uh, I think we have time for one final question if there is All right uh so do let us know uh I think we have a poll for this or you have the uh, form that will pop up after the end of this call please let us know if you would like us to reach out to you and help you build an emotionally intelligent workplace a more emotionally intelligent workplace given your responses so far so uh help others in your organization build that skill as well and just to give you a quick uh, shout out about our upcoming products we will have uh, new products coming out very soon we hope to see you all there for those launches as well we'll have one on dealing with unconscious biases we'll have one on powering successful collaborations and then managing difficult conversations that's all from us uh, for now thanks amrita thank you all for joining us okay we have we do have a final question uh vibhav has asked uh, does it get complemented with other learning methods uh so uh, vibhav i would like to answer this question in this manner uh what you saw today was just the simulation uh, normally how we design our learning is uh through learn apply and reflect those are the three levels that we do learning is a part that comes before the simulation uh our it is facilitator driven or it can be self paced where you learn about the framework you learn about the concepts and thereafter you jump into the simulation where you apply what you learned and finally you reflect through the debrief uh, so the entire learning strategy is much longer than the simulation and we are more than happy to work with you and uh, showcase how this learning happens um, 
If you, if you leave a note to us, we'll get back to you for sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we loved having you here with us. And we hope to see you soon for the next launch. Thank you, everyone.